Welcome to Meeples on Meeples, episode 25. I'm Adam. Ian. Brian. Patrick. Before we get into our review this week, of course, we want to invite you over to our uh, Facebook page, page at facebook.com slash meeples on meeples, uh, to our new website, meeples on meeples.com, and over to YouTube, to our YouTube channel, where we post all of our videos. Um, <coughs> again, we'd also like to remind everybody that we do have a contest going on to kind of celebrate the launch of our website. Uh, we're giving away a $20 gift certificate to Cool Stuff, Inc. The only thing you have to do to be eligible for that is to be a subscriber to our YouTube channel by 11.59 p.m. Central Standard Time on February 28th, 2013. The, be sure that you have. That's very yeah, specific. The one, <laughs> very specific. <laughs> the one uh, caveat to that that we haven't really mentioned in the past videos, I want to make sure everybody knows, is if you're going to subscribe to our channel, make sure you have a YouTube account. If you don't, we appreciate you subscribing, but we can't keep track of you, so if you wouldn't be eligible to win. We don't have a name to put in the hat at that point to draw out when we, when we pick our gift certificate. So. In which case, then I get the gift certificate. Yeah, I think. Exactly. Is that how that works? <laughs> but just make sure you have a YouTube account. Go over to our channel. Subscribe by February 28th at 11.59 p.m. Central Standard Time, and you'll be eligible for the gift certificate. On to this week's game of the week, Zularetto. Zularetto is a, a good family game, plays two to five. However, um, having played it with two, three, four, five, it does not play well with two players. I'm going to throw that out here right now. There's all these special rules, and it just is not nearly as interactive as fun. <clears throat> you start off with the zoo with three enclosures, and then you have the option for a fourth enclosure, but that is flipped over face down. And it and should be clear off the bat, this is actually a map that everybody gets. This is yes, on the board. It's this is true. Map. Each person has their own zoo. And in the middle of the table, you'll have as many um, trucks to receive shipments of animals as you have players. Now, on your turn, you can only do one action, and your actions are basically as follows. You can draw an animal at random from this bag, and you can place it on any of the trucks, because they're not your truck. It's just, just place it on one. You can decide to take a truck as they slowly fill up, uh, but then that removes you for the rest of the round. Or you can do one of the options which uh, they tell you on this player card, which is very nice. Your options are you can move one tile, exchange two types of tiles, purchase one tile, discard a tile, or expand your zoo, at which point, like I said, you flip this over and you now have another enclosure for a type of animal. You cannot have two different animals in the same enclosure because they would I don't know, fight, eat each other, yeah. create weird genetic experiment babies, <laughs> whatever. Um, but what happens is, so on my turn I would draw, so we'll go ahead and demonstrate that. <clears throat> And you can get a coin, which the coins are what allow you to buy these actions over here. And then the next person might draw, and they'll put out, what do you got there? An elephant. And again, you can put it on any one of them. And as they slowly fill up, let's just fill these up quickly here. Eventually, they're going to become enticing. Oh, and by the way, a lot of these are getting shops on them. Shops go on these little vendor stalls, which can help you in the scoring later on. So you'll fill these up. There's zebras, there's elephants, there's flamingos, pandas, chimpanzees, cheetahs, all kinds of interesting animals. And so as they fill up, eventually it's going to come around and, you know what, I don't want to do one of these actions, I don't want to do one of these things, I'm going to choose a truck. So now Pat just chose that truck, and he's out. And the rest of us can keep filling or stealing trucks um, and until everyone is eventually drawn and these are all gone. All options are out of the game. So if this was my zoo and I had this, I would say, okay, well, I've got a panda... I'll choose to put him here, and I'll move the stalls around on these empty spaces. A new round begins. The last person who took a truck goes first, and you continue to fill those up. You can spend coins to, to buy animals from each other, whatever. But what happens is once we have different animals, give me different types of animals. Okay, so I have four animals in all my enclosures. So as soon as I get a type of animal that's not in there, a chimpanzee, if this is on one of the trucks I take, they have to start going in the house. Now, at the end of the game, this is negative points. If I have taken animals or I've been stuck with things that I did not want, and they're in the house at the end of the game, I lose points. Um, so that's a per, bad thing. Two points per species. Negative two points per species of animal you have in there. Negative two points per once the vendor stalls are all filled up uh, for each type of vendor stall you have in there. Um, but otherwise, that's basically it. Scoring uh, is, is kind of complicated. You get the big number. If it's full, you have... What is this hold? Six elephants. I have six elephants in there. I get the big number. If I'm just one shy, I get the small number. If I have a vending stall, I get one point per animal beyond that. If, uh, that's less than those numbers. And the one kind of interesting thing that goes with the animals, they do have male and female of each species. So if you get a male and female, you automatically end up with a baby. Oh, which is a baby. <clears throat> yeah, which is good if you, if you have an extra space in your stall, but at the same time, if you don't, 
that baby's going to have to go in the house, and it's going to be negative points later on. But mm -hmm. the babies are circle, the actual animals, the, the parents are square. And, and some of the parents, only certain, there's only a couple of each species that can have the, the mom or dad symbol, yeah. and the male or female symbol. These other ones do not mate and create babies for you or whatever. But all species have the male and female option. Yes, yeah. yep, there's male female option for each species. So sometimes it's good, you get that last male you need, but then like, oh shoot, that would have filled my pen, and I have to add a baby immediately, that's not an option, so... But that's basically how it plays. As you go around until uh, basically the tiles are gone, and there's one last pile of tiles. You draw the like that from the last 15. That means signals is the last round, and you add up your points from there. And whoever has the most points win. If there's a tie, then you will go by who has the most coins. Still. So. Well, why don't we jump into components here? Anybody got any thoughts on components? <laughs> Simple. Um, don't like the trucks yeah. as much though. They're there because they're not really trucks. They're like boats more than... Yeah. They're, like the, they're like the survive boats. That's what it yeah. reminds me of. Yeah. I mean, I, 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 well, actually, a lot like yeah. that. But what I like is uh, they it's are solid. wooden. Yeah, solid. And this, the pieces fit perfectly in those really? spaces. They, they're they they're well cut. They're painted. They're functional. They're not hard to get the pieces out. They're not hard to get them back mm -hmm. in. I mean, yeah, I don't, I don't know why you... I think it's actually a really nice touch. It could have just been anything... A little just, piece of I mean, cardboard, little strip of cardboard. And on the top of the lane, it looks like a truck more painted. Put some, put some wheels on it so you can roll across yeah. the tape. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I'm not saying that wouldn't be cool. Yeah. That would be a little unnecessary. That, I mean, I, I actually thought that was a plus there. I, I, the one thing I have to say, I think it's colorful enough. The it's Especially for a family game. Oh, yeah. It's colorful. It's appealing. Um, the animals are very clear what they are. And they're very well-known animals for the for the most part in the... In the, uh, in the Beginning set. Yeah, you have like a platypus or something yeah. in there. <laughs> and you can buy expansions, but uh, it's it's nice and easy, and children will pick up on this very quickly. There's no, there's no type font either. No, there's no type. There's Except no reading. This is the only thing that. And well, this comes in several languages. There you go on the back, and then there's another for with two other languages, another set of those. Really? So there's actually four languages in the game, which is pretty. But sweet. they couldn't give me wheels on the on the truck. <laughs> the truck. Yeah. Well, just, the one thing I like about it, and we've gone over this in other videos, I like having player mats. I kind of like the idea that your player mat is actually your board in this, too. You just, there's no like central that. board. you got your own separate board. It's got places for everything where everything fits perfectly. Uh, it's got a good art style. And it kind of goes into the strategy of the game, too, where you have to watch everybody else's board, too. Yeah, yeah. And you can really you can kind of hide it around. And well, yeah, we'll get to the yeah, we'll strategies in a second, but, yeah, you just brought up something that made me want to talk about that. But, anyway, staying with components... Um, yeah, I mean, everything, the cardboard is all pretty durable. The mats are, the, are the, thick. The coins that you start off with are nice wooden. There's this is wood also true. Wood coins. Oh, and then the cloth draw bag. Um, I believe not all copies of the game originally came with this, but uh, instead of just having a pile and having to flip these all upside down and mix them together like you do in some games, it's nice that you can just do a blind draw out of here. You, you want to jump in on that, Ian? I know I just, you're... <laughs> I, love being, I love passing this around, but Ian has other feelings. I just, for some reason, I, the, the pass it around, it always ends up, Somebody just doesn't pass it or whatever. They just leave it. There's leaving. Yeah. They have to reach across the <laughs> at table. A, at a big it. table, it's kind of amazing. Yeah, a big table yeah. and just it, it's just. A but don't you think that's kind of a minor it's not, pick? It's 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 nice that they even include it. You don't have to play with it. I guess you could make a pile. No, it was I, nice I, that I, they put it. I'd rather have it in something, but maybe something that's more stationary in the center or something. I see. Huh? How about strategies on this game? I mean, it, it is a pretty simple game, but I think there is some strategy to it. Yeah. Watching other, you mentioned watching, seeing what other people have in their zoo. Could, because yep. if I had this zoo going on, and Ian was placing the animals, he wouldn't want to make it too easy and keep putting zebras on there, seeing that I have a lot of empty spaces and I'm going for zebras. Yep. He might know that, you know, Brian is going to snatch that one out before it comes back to me or whatever. So you... As tempting as it might be to load a truck up with like, lots of coins and the animals you want, if there are other people going for that, they're probably going to pick it before it comes and, around and, and, and you won't get a choice. Something to go on top of that is sometimes you want to, you know, like, like you said, Ryan, he's going for zebras, but the rest of his pens are filled. You throw on an animal that he doesn't have in his pens. You throw on, like, if he doesn't have a, he has, like, the monkey there in the house know. there. You force him to have to make the decision, am I going to take the zebra truck? and get stuck with that monkey, or how am I going to play this? Yeah, something gonna that's going to hurt me in my house, <clears throat> yeah. that's true, good strategy. And, and another thing that I have to say, and um, th that, I do, that I find useful, is you don't always want to wait until the truck is full. Oftentimes, mm -hmm. I jumped in when there's only one thing on that truck, and people would say, well, why are you taking it? Well, if it's you play a strategy right, you pull that one thing, that you really need, and you don't have to worry about it getting filled up with a lot of other a lot of other garbage you don't need. And that's especially true at the end of the game. Yeah, you're at the end of the low game, on tiles, yeah. you're gonna get stuck with something. When you, don't you want. see this getting empty, and you know that you're gonna start drawing from the end of the game pile, it, that's a good time to get while well, the game's good. I mean, get the one animal that's gonna help you. Yeah, you're right. You can't draw. Score. You can't draw an empty truck. But if I see that likelihood is I'm gonna get stuck with a lot of useless animals, 
or there is one truck with maybe something that's not going to help me a lot, a vendor house on it. Well, at the end of the game, so I don't lose a lot of points, that may be my best strategy is take the near empty yeah. truck. A um, couple of other strategy points with money. Uh, spend it early, spend it fast. Um, you don't need it at the end of the game. Yeah, so, it really doesn't matter if you get it. So, yeah. And any time that a, uh, a player has um, an animal in their barn, you can automatically just buy that from them. They get the one coin, and then the other coin goes to the bank. Yeah, it's too but, much. But they have no say in you taking that. that yeah, and that's character. a good way to Only if it's in their barn. And, yeah. that, and so basically, if you have money, and you have a move to make, or you have something that somebody else has, or you need to spend that money, spend it now. Spend it before you get to the end of the game, because really, it's worth it. One of the that. best purchases you can make is this extra mm -hmm. um, pen. Because again, once I take one of these, I'm out, and I can't decide later, oh, now I want to expand my zoo shoot because I have an animal that I don't have room in my three original pens, you know, because it starts upside down. It's you want to expand this first, and then if I get an animal, I have that extra pen, I can put it over here. A potential okay. extra nine points. Too, you can't. Actually, actually you, I don't think you can actually win the game without that extra pen. So it would be really hard. So yeah. really, I, I mean, it is, it is a critical piece. You need to buy it, you need to buy it right away, and as soon as you can. And, you, and another, uh, another search app. You don't have to fill up all of your pens. Matter of fact, the, the last game that I won, I only had one pen completely filled. I worked on getting the other fill, other pens close to a fill as much as I want. You have to be very careful because, as we said earlier, if you pull, if I had a female elephant and I had one space left for the elephants making this pen full, the only elephant that was out on the, uh, on the trucks at that point was a male elephant, which means if I got the male elephant, I would have popped one into the house and I would have lost points. So at that point, I just I, w I bypassed that elephant and went for something I else. I do have a question, and I don't know, maybe we want to answer it now, but um, when you filled up your elephants, let's say it was in the five space, and then you actually you popped in your baby elephant into the thing, can you actually pay your to switch types? Can you switch this type to that type? Switching the two pens, but getting you, your more space, and then pick the elephant out. Nope, the baby's stuck in there. That's you why you have, have to pay one to, to move that one tile. Yeah, right. that's, that's another a good strategy is, um, shoot, I've got four cheetahs. I want that truck, but it has two more, and I only have five spaces in here. Before you grab the truck, that's when you want to pay the, 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 two, the two coins to move them, you know, swap them into the bigger enclosure with another animal. Assuming that this isn't already falling over, you know, flowing or whatever, and then you want to take that. Honestly, I because once they go in here, they're first. stuck in there until you pay buy them out. I would rather take it first, especially, in, and then just spend your money early in the next round. But you have to spend. But sometimes money's spend. pretty tight because you don't get a lot of money it's unless true, you luck true. out. Like this was just a crazy drop. I mean, you're you're going to spend three to pull that off, whereas if you do it before, you're going to spend two. Sure. But like you said, you might not get that truck. Too. Right. It's all a, a gamble. Do I wait or do I pull out early? You know. Yeah. Sure. Um, any other strategies? Uh, no. How about likes or dislikes then on this? Um, I like the th other than the trucks. Yeah, <laughs> just the trucks. Just the trucks. Um, and I know I hear where you're coming from with the trucks. One thing I like is I would put this on the same tier of games, as far as like a family-friendly theme, a unique theme. There aren't a lot of zoo games out there. Nice components, but not over the top expensive. I would put this in the same tier of game as Survive Escape from Atlantis and Tobago. It plays in about the same amount of time, forty-five minutes to an hour. It's he has some choices and strategy to be made, but it's not going to have somebody just staring at the board going totally crazy deciding what to do. And I love, you know, from our reviews, I love Tobago and Survive. I'm actually and I think this is a lot like those games. It reminded me of that type of game, a, a medium to light Euro, fun, a little bit of screw your neighbor. I'm going to say this is actually easier than Tobago even. I think you probably go with a younger age on this, mostly because there's, there's no writing. Besides this one little card, it's all pictures. It's all very family friendly. Well, how, but how then you're not going to. But, it, but it's, it's similar. But Tobago, Tobago is one where I think that gets a little more complicated because you got to kind of keep track of the treasures and where you can place. That so that's, turn. Exactly. Well, this one, this says thirteen plus. Yeah, thirteen and up. I can't. That, that seems boggles my high. mind. That I don't know what they were. Saying. How low would you guys go? Let's just go with how low. I think my nine year old could easily play this. I played it with a my smart, son. A smart nine year old. If your nine year old's not smart. Mm. And the fish, you gotta be honest with yourself. Sometimes it's hard to do, but maybe your kid ain't cutting it. Um, I think my nine year old could I think my nine year old could get away with this. I would say eight and up if, if one of the parents or adults is willing to sit with sit the game out and kinda of team up and help the kid. But yeah, nine or ten and up. I mean the thirteen that's ridiculous. This game is not that complicated. There's very little reading involved. And there aren't many rules. I mean, you can do one thing per turn. You have to make choices, but you can only do one thing per turn, you know? How about other likes and dislikes on the game? Anybody? Uh, the trucks. The trucks. The trucks. The bag. Right. <laughs> the bag. A bunch of things that I like both those things about it. So. It's just your, it's your it's against personal song. preference. Yeah. I, I do actually like the, the, I think the, the art style of it, actually. It's, 
not only like we've talked about as a family friendly game, but it's got just a very inviting art style. It's actually pretty good for what it, it is. It reminds me a lot of um, oh, wasn't there a Sims game with animals? Like a Sim or, yeah, or a zoo? Was, there was a zoo video yeah. game. It's it's very much like that. No, you can buy you can buy expansions for this with different animals. There are a lot of expansions. Yes, there are several like expansions. Tycoon? Yeah, Maybe that's what I'm thinking. That might be it. But doesn't doesn't it kind of look like that art style? I don't even know. I didn't play it. The one, the one thing I can say about that, there's lots of expansions that you can get into. There's also an Aquariado. 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 Which is like a game. sea world, but you can. it's a standalone game, but you can yeah. combine it with this. So there's, there's lots of different options if you really like this. Um, I can see where this could get a little monotonous a after a little bit, but um, there is it, that it works slight, it does. There but is I that like slight boredom, though, and I don't know where it's coming from. Really? It really you think so? There's a little bit of drab in the middle, and I don't know what it is. I couldn't play back to back games, you know, more than two. I Maybe mean, that's a good segue into our review. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah that's, that's a good jump in. There. Unless anybody. Well, I have one more like is the price point. You can find this game for like thirty to thirty five bucks oh, online, which is for a designer board game that is pretty reasonable. You know, nowadays. But anyway, so um, one to ten, one is terrible, ten is awesome. What's your review, Ian? I would give it a six. Uh, it was it was fun enough to play. I probably wouldn't stay away from it when it hit the table, but I probably wouldn't go and suggest it. Um, again, it kind of the the game kind of just was a little bit long for what it is. I mean, it really is simplistic in its nature, and it just you know it almost felt like the. A chipacabra game where you should just roll, roll, dun, 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 and move faster, but it, it really just kind of drew out because there was too many monotonous choices that you didn't really, it didn't really matter if you made the choice or not, kind of thing. I don't know. That's just kind of where I landed on the game. Okay. I'm actually going to end up about six, maybe a six, five, probably a six, though, and it's kind of the same things. It's, it's a, a fun game. I had a good time. I'm probably not going to be, it's not like Tobago where I'm actually going to ask to play it, I think. Um, it's it's good because it's got kind of a wide appeal for kids. I you know got some kids of my own getting older. I think it would be a nice game to have in my collection so I could kind of get them into board games at at some point. This would be a good starting game or starting type of game. But it's fun. It, it's it plays really easily. It's the rules are very simple. It does not take a lot to to learn it and get into the first game. And I'm actually going to disagree. I actually think it plays fairly quickly. I mean, what is it, maybe half an hour? It's 30, an hour if, <laughs> I'm not with saying. five people, and if you're really taking your time and somebody's kind of thinking, I, overthinking I think it, it could be an hour at most. I think it's most. a game where you can at just most. throw it out there, maybe a filler game, an end-of-the-night game, so I, I like it for that kind of I mean, it really, it does play quick, but it almost is, it's almost, it, it needs to be quicker. It, it's just, because it is just so, it's just a small game with not very much stuff, not to it. I mean, it should, it, I thought it should play even quicker than that. And the one thing I do like is it, even though it is a simple game, last kind of thing, is it does have that kind of screw you aspect where you got to keep track of everybody else and you can, depending on what animals you put on a truck, you can really screw the other players that are still in it. I kind of like that competitive I like, nature. I like player that. interaction. Um, I'm, I'm sorry, I just with both of you guys. I would give this because I feel like it's a lot like Tobago and Fort Vibe. It is an eight. <laughs> wow. This game is an eight. Just, wow. You always That's high. It's That's always high. high for the games you own. Wow. Yes. Okay. No, I did not like level seven a lot. That was a horrible disappointment. No, because I everything you said, I just I think is wrong. You said there aren't many choices to make. Um, there are seven. You have seven options. There's seven things you can choose to do. That's a pretty good a number. Any more than that's when you have analysis problems. Well, like, I don't know what to do. It so wasn't there for me. I really just there are plenty of choices to make. There's that, do I, do I pull out early, but then then I sit around waiting for other people and a better choice might come along, or do I wait and risk Maybe waiting too long and getting stuck with stuff? It could be. Um, <laughs> that would more than likely. Did I talk when you reviewed? <laughs> Shush it. Shush it. I apologize. Um, Let's keep going. So there are, there are the right number of choices. I don't know why you want something to play faster than like 30 to 45 minutes. Once you take the time to get out the game, everybody has these boards and set it up. That's kind of a waste of time if it's going to take 10 minutes. Um, beautiful art style. Anybody of almost any age can play it. Non-gamers get it. I like the theme. I mean, I just go, I love the components. I'm sorry. It got game of the year for a reason. It's an eight. It's a really good game. I was surprised to like it as much as I do, but I would say it is an eight. You should have it. And I think it was a point for everybody if you talked about it. And yeah. ba ba <laughs> back to somebody reasonable. Yeah. <laughs> I'm giving this uh, a six. Now, if I was... If I was doing this... If I I'm the outlier here. Yeah, you are way out. What, what year was this game of the year? 2007. Okay, okay. Um, if I, you know... As a family game, now if I was if I was judging this as a pure family game, I would give it higher. But as a player, somebody who's just gonna sit down and play with a gaming group of, of other adults, 
I can't go above a six. If I was going with the, you know, if I was reviewing this as a great family game, it would have been if I was on the holiday episode, this would have been a great suggested family game. But for me as the player, it's a six. A couple of reasons why. First of all, it's okay. It's good. I would not deny playing with it. I would not refuse to play it. Um, it's okay. It's good. Did I talk when you were doing it? I don't think so. Okay. You all did. I did not. You all talked when I reviewed it. Because um, you're wrong. I like, the, I, like the, I like the pictures. I like the pieces. It's just kind of there, though. It's it's kind of it's a light filler. It's a good palate cleanser after a hard game. But uh, other than that, I just cannot. Reasonable people of the world who agree with me flood our email inbox, meeplesonmeeples at gmail.com, with how much this game rocks to prove these guys wrong. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. 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 Um, but uh, I, I'll give it a six. Right. If I was, if, like you said, if I was going to do it with a family, if, if we were talking purely family games, this would be high on the family game. Yeah, thing. I, can, I agree. I agree with that. But as a client of this group, I'd give it a six. Obviously, this group, man. <laughs> well, that's our review for this week, uh, Zularetto. I believe next week we are doing Sentinels, Sentinels of the Multiverse, yeah. the enhanced edition. Which he'll give a nine since he owns it. Just so you know. Just so you know. Check us out next week. Thanks.